Greetings, Ben Pearson, the Roadster Tracker, and today we're going to talk about what SpaceX is actually doing with their crazy Starship plans, and are they really being successful? Because that's the, the public line, and the people who follow SpaceX say that. So, the SpaceX Starship launches so far have been somewhat of an anomaly. We had the first launch was the Starhopper that just barely went up and right back down, no big deal. Uh, it had a 10 meter launch that worked just fine. They did a couple in the 100 meter range and those worked fine without too many issues. And then they started to launch them to five or six miles high. And most of those ones failed. They did finally succeed though in one. And now we've had the integrated flight tests or flight tests, whatever they call them. The first one it managed to make it past the launch pad, but then, you know, the rocket didn't separate fully and it had uh, some serious issues, blew up the launch pad in effect. The second one made it further, uh, did make it to stage separation, but the Starship failed to make its intended orbit in the end. And the booster blew up shortly after separation. The third one, the Starship made it to its intended orbit, but it wasn't able to stabilize itself while it was on orbit. And then the booster actually went all the way through down to re-entry, but something happened at the very end where it did not succeed. So given all of this, is the Starship program really successful? And that's very, very different than the normal timeline that you have for a rocket. Even the early history of SpaceX, take the Falcon 1 rocket. They launched it once, they were trying to get to orbit every single time. And the third one, they didn't fully succeed and it was almost an ending moment for the company, but SpaceX doesn't seem like that. They're treating it like a success. Why? And that's the, the real thing. See, Starship is not like any other rocket, and the development process for it is different than any other rocket that's existed in the past. The goal of Starship is to make it 100% reusable, and nothing short of that will work. So what does all of that really practically mean? Well, they are going for the goal not just to take something into space, but to have it be fully reusable. The early Falcon 9 launches, the booster would not reignite because that was considered risky. I think they actually had to demonstrate that it would work on a later mission. Well, Starship is trying to be fully reusable. So the thing by design can survive re-entry. If you have something that is the size of an airplane that will land at some random spot on Earth uncontrolled, you could do some serious, serious damage. And so they don't wanna do that. They don't wanna hurt anything. And in fact, they're legally required to not do that. So what do they have to do to make that actually work? Well, they have to find a way to control it even later. So Starship, the Flight 3, they couldn't control the spacecraft once it got to orbit. It would have been able to deploy satellites had it had an operational mission, but the re-entry would have been uncontrolled. And with an uncontrolled re-entry, then you risk the, the possibility of really damaging something. So they had to not have a payload because the payload has to be dropped off in orbit but they can't fully orbit until they can get the thing to land safely. All they can do is a near orbital velocity. It doesn't have to go all the way to landing, but they do have to demonstrate that they can relight the engine when it is on orbit. Okay, so the Starship launch is not quite there yet, but Starship Flight 3, by the success of a normal rocket was a fully successful flight test. They would have been able to deliver a payload had there been a payload and had it been targeting an orbit. It still falls far short of the eventual promise of Starship, which is the rapidly and fully reusable spacecraft with a cheap fuel that it aims to be. But 
make no mistake, they are making some serious improvements and they will be able to figure this stuff out. Every flight test, therefore, has that as its goal, the rapidly and fully reusable spacecraft to reduce the cost to get to space. So they're continuing to iterate. They did that with the Falcon 9 to some extent. It drove some of the people at NASA nuts, actually. Every single flight vehicle was just a little bit different than the previous one. And they didn't really settle that down until they hit the Block 5. And even then, Block 5, they still kind of maintain the same type of configuration going forward. But, you know, we saw in the early days of Falcon 9, they had a square booster configuration. And they later switched that to the OctaWeb that is the current configuration for Falcon 9. Because the square configuration just had some issues that they needed to work out. They had four or five different launches. Pretty much all of them were some form of the commercial cargo because SpaceX really needed the money, so they had to use that contract to demonstrate it. With the Starship program, they don't really need the, the cash. They have cash that is available to demonstrate that. They're taking all of the R&D money that they have and pushing it into that to have a vehicle that is rapidly and fully reusable because that is their goal. So all that being said, the first few Starship launches, they haven't been fully successful per se, but they have met the end goal of learning a little bit more to make the goal of the rockets cheaper. SpaceX knows that these are high risk missions. They're not putting payloads into these because they know there's a significant chance they could blow up. In fact, Flight 4 will not have any Starlink satellites in it or have any kind of payload. And Starlink, you know, they're only paying for the cost of the satellites. They could put a couple of test ones in there if they wanted to, but they're not going to fully orbit the planet. And so therefore, if they can't do that, then they cannot release their payloads because the payloads would just re-enter along with the rocket. And they can't really do that until they can demonstrate that they can land the thing safely. But all of that only matters because they're trying to make it reusable. If they weren't trying to make it reusable, then the rocket would effectively blow itself to pieces like every other rocket does when it re-enters Earth. And yeah, you could target it to try to land safely, but you know, a Falcon 9 upper stage, if it were to re-land over a populated area, you probably wouldn't actually even notice. Although they do try to intentionally land the ones that they can in the middle of the Indian or the Pacific Ocean because why take the risk if you don't have to? So we know that the, the Flight 4, their goal is to survive the peak heating of the Starship portion and also to take the booster and do a landing on a simulated tower. You know, they're basically going to say, hey, there's a tower here. Pretend like you're landing on that. And if they can do that pinpoint accuracy, then Elon Musk has said that with the Flight 5, they'll actually try to land the booster on Mechazilla, which is their uh, launch tower that has these robotic arms, which is one of the more insane ideas, actually, that I've heard out of SpaceX. You never really know, though, what they're going to do. So... Really, even though the rockets keep blowing up, they're learning more, they're advancing further, and most importantly, they're always accomplishing the goal that they set out to do, at least with the integrated flight tests that they have had so far. They're not meeting the goals with the earlier Starship launches where their goal was to just simply land the rocket vertically, but that's such a crazy, crazy process with fluid sloshing all over the place, it doesn't surprise me it took a little while for them to figure it out. All that being said, SpaceX's Starship is really a revolutionary vehicle, and they are figuring stuff out. Yeah, it may not be super, super successful looking right now, but NASA is behind them, and they have access to the data that we don't have. 
and they seem quite pleased with it overall. They know the process. SpaceX is deliberately doing risky things so that way they can have ultimate success in the end. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. I appreciate everything you do. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care. We will see you then.